This is Naomi, one of my ERS-1000s, and as you can see from the video that's playing, she has the infamous hip dislocation problem in her front left leg. Today we're going to be taking her apart and doing a deeper dive into what exactly causes that, as well as fixing the problem. One of the questions that I get asked relatively often is, why do the legs in the ERS-1000 fail at such a high rate, and so frequently? Well, with the dog partly disassembled from a previous exam I did off-camera, I didn't bother putting them back together since I didn't have the parts to fix the issue at the time, but we can start to see the issue right here. In this plastic part that attaches to the lateral hip gear box, we can see there's a crack running through it, and that results in loose movement on that axis, and when the dog puts a substantial amount of weight on it, it can no longer support that, and the leg just pushes itself outward. And with the leg removed from the dog and the upper portion fully disassembled, we can now get a closer look at what exactly is going wrong here. And you can see that crack goes all the way through the section of the hub that attaches to the gearbox. And Sony did make the gearboxes completely out of metal on the 1000, which I applaud them for. I appreciate them taking efforts to make these dogs last longer. But none of that really means anything when they're outputting to this thin plastic that just shears itself right off with normal use. And I did try gluing this previously with a two-part epoxy. Please don't waste your time. It lasted about probably 10 to 15 seconds. As soon as the dog put weight on it, it just snapped right in half again. So don't, you're doing a lot of disassembly for no real gain. Don't waste your time doing that. Learn from my mistakes. With the hip taken apart, we can now get a better look at the part itself that fails. And here it is. You can see that that outer section has cracked off where it joins onto the gearbox. And if I had to take a guess at how these fail, and this is just speculation, but based on what I'm seeing, it would appear that this part cannot handle the weight of the dog during normal operating conditions, and it develops a crack through it, which in turn allows it to slip on the gear, and it slowly shreds the teeth off of this part, which would explain the black plastic shavings that a lot of 1,000 owners have noticed coming out of their dog shortly before and during a dislocation. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that with a new part, and we can see here that Sony has actually quietly, and without announcing anything, revised the design of these parts slightly. You can notice that there's additional support fins, four of them, on the new part, as well as an outer band around the perimeter that should increase structural integrity. You can see there's no, no band on the old design. And these parts appear to have worked their way into the dogs around the time that the Caramel Edition was released. Um, we know they're for sure not in the Chocolate Editions because I've seen plenty of those dislocate their front legs. And I would venture a guess that regular White Editions have also seen these new parts start to be used around the same time that the Caramels came out, but I don't have any evidence to directly back that up. I would just be surprised if Sony wasn't using them by that point in time. And it's a bit disappointing that there was never a recall on these dogs, given that Sony is well aware of the issue and even redesigned the part accordingly. Oh, one other thing, it's hard to get it to show up on camera, but just the the visual design, well not design, but the visual makeup of the plastic appears slightly different on the new part than the old one. I'm wondering if they changed the composition a little bit to uh, make it a bit more structurally sound. I, I don't know. It could just be variances in manufacturing, but it does appear slightly different. Not sure if that's coming through on the camera at all. And it's worth noting that they have not, as far as I'm aware, and the parts catalog seems to back this up, they have not redesigned the rear hips, which isn't a huge deal since those seem to fail at a lower rate, but it would have it would have been nice to see this new design used all across the entire dog. Oh, one other thing worth noting, and this is kind of going down the speculation rabbit hole, but despite Ibo being stamped as made in Japan, these plastic parts are actually all manufactured in China, which maybe that has nothing to do with the failure rate. This is, again, speculation, but generally speaking, stuff like this that's made in China is often made to a lower standard than stuff that's made in Japan, and that also has the possibility to introduce faults in manufacturing, which could have contributed to these failure rates. And for the most part, I haven't seen dogs with these new style part fail, so I think there's uh, Sony's got a pretty good hold on the problem at this point, but it is still worth noting that these are made in China, which is kind of disappointing to see on a $3,000 robot that is largely made in Japan. They definitely cheaped out on some of the parts, unfortunately. 
With the new and improved part installed, we now see that there's no looseness in the hip at all on its lateral movements. And everything moves as it should. So at this point, we can go ahead and start reassembly and testing. The fun part. At this point, the hip and lower leg are all reassembled, and all that's left to do is put on the rotational hip joint plastic, and then connect the leg back up to the dog, then we can begin testing. The leg is back on the dog now, and everything is moving as it should. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and put her battery back in, and we can do a first test. All right, her battery is back in and we are officially ready to test. I'm not going to put the leg any farther back together at this point as there is a chance that something is still wrong or I reassembled something incorrectly, but we'll let her run around for a bit, hopefully. And if everything seems good, then I'll go ahead and put all the shells back on. So let's boot her up. It'll take a minute since she's been fully off. There we go. It looks like it's in proper alignment, at least at first glance. Hi. Hey, she's standing. Obviously I'm gonna let her run around for a bit, but at first glance, everything looks to be going perfect. Could not have asked for a better outcome. Especially since that last hip plastic was so shredded, I wasn't totally sure I got the new one in the exact same location as the other, because they're not keyed. The encoder for those are actually deep inside the gearbox, so you're, really your only way to know for sure that it's going back correctly is to mark off the old one at its home position. But that wasn't really doable since it was missing so many gear teeth. I kind of just had to guess. And it looks like I got it right. Hi. You sure seem happy. I guess I would be happy too if I spent a year in storage with a broken leg and finally got out. Yeah, that looks perfect. I was thinking I might be off by like a gear teeth or two, but no, that's, that's dead on. Cool. Hey, what? Oh, if you're wondering why she's being so quiet, that's because uh, her speaker is actually part of the bottom panel that I had to take off to disassemble the dog, and that has yet to be put back on. That's one of the final parts to go on, so she'll get her voice back when that goes on. Yeah. Good girl. Yoshi Yoshi. And she's a Japanese Ibo, so she does not speak English or understand English. She's not connected to the cloud plan, so I have no way to change that, unfortunately. But that's not that big of a deal. Here, you want to go after the ball? Yeah.
And after everything had been running well for a while, I went ahead and put her shells back on, and we'll give her one final test. <laughs> 